Hey everybody, it's Erica here and it's Facebook Friday. I hope you're having a great Friday so far. I have to um, put out a little caveat today. We are having some work done um, in our front yard and right on the other side of the camera is the front porch and right on the other side of the porch is where they're doing concrete. <laughs> And they just started a big saw. So if you guys can hear it, I apologize. We're just going to go for it today. My husband's been in and out. The dogs are barking. I don't know what's going to happen. So we'll see. Hello, everybody. Thanks for joining me. I'm going to run through some announcements real quick. Uh, I'm good. Thanks, Gina. I'm going to run through some announcements real quick because I think today's projects are going to take the better part of an hour. And I have to be done by three. Oh, Sandy, thanks for sharing already. You're on it. Um... Okay, so I'm gonna run through some things. Let's see, if you've never joined us for Facebook Friday before, welcome. Um, I always do three projects on Friday and I have a PDF over on my blog, looks like this. It'll have all three projects um, typed up with the, the products that you need to make these as well as any measurements or anything. Um, that's free, you can go over to my blog. It's under the last photo. You click on it, you can save it, download it, print it, whatever you want. On the second page, I just want to point out a couple of things. Um, my blends club is almost full and um, I have a number where I have to cut it off otherwise it, I can't do it, it's too much. Um, so that, we've almost gotten there. Um, so if you want to join the blends club that begins November 1st, please message me or email me soon. Um, it starts November 1st and basically it's a great way to learn how to use your blends. It's also a great way to buy all the new blends. You buy a couple a month, a, a four sets a month, or if you already have them, you just order an equal amount and use the hostess code. And then in turn, I send you projects along with a video um, lesson for that month and a free embellishment. Um, some, you know, it's different each month. So if you'd like, if you're interested in that, please message me. The details are here. You can click on that link and it'll take you over and you can read the full information. Everybody's welcome. And even if you already own the blends, yes, it still works. I promise it can work for you. The second thing I wanted to tell you is that my um, retreat to go is sold out. Thank you, everybody. The response has been overwhelming this year. Um, and I only have a couple spots left at my local retreat. So if you are planning on going to the local retreat, please message me ASAP. Um, and then my two next uh, classes to go are on there. Um, starting November 1st, which is Thursday, Stampin' Up! has a new bundle coming out, or a suite of products, really. Um, there are two stamp sets and a framelit set, a set of framelits. Um, these, this is what they look like. They will only be available in November, but really the most amazing thing are these framelits. And I have been designing next week's Facebook Friday projects. We're gonna do these next Friday, November 2nd, and you are gonna see how amazing these are. Um, the stamps are great too, but I just can't stop cutting and shimmering and shining and glittering all these beautiful snowflakes. So that'll be next week. If you um, want this, any of this there's also some little trinkets and some flocked paper if you want any of that it'll it'll be available beginning November 1st and I will be able to show you more in depth next week that's gonna be my product of the week little little sneak peek that's gonna definitely be the product of the week next week all right um, a couple things I have been kind of cleaning and I have a few class kits left um, I always cut a couple extra just in case any of them get lost. I have a Falling for Leaves class kit. I have a um, Country Home class kit. And I know it's going to be late, but you could use them next year. I have um, a few of the Halloween Cauldron Toil and Trouble Halloween class kits. If you're interested in one of those, message me. All right. Um, because I would like to get them out to you and I'd rather them be used than sitting in my drawer, taking up lots of precious space. Okay, so let's do prizes. Um, last week I was giving away Peaceful Noel along with the star, the wire snowflakes or whatever they're called. <laughs> I guess I should tell you the right name. Um, the snowflakes and stars wire elements, those are the names those, as well as this beautiful um, copper Merlot ribbon. I have two bundles. This is the bundle, these three things. And the first one is 
Faith Middleton. Congratulations, Faith. I have your uh, mailing address. I will be sending those to you. And then um, for sharing, Trisha Mangus. She's in my downline. I was excited to see her name, Trisha. And she said something really sweet on her, her share when she shared the video. So Trisha, congratulations. I'll be sending these to you. I have your email address or your mailing address. Now on Tuesday during my Facebook Live where I showed you that guy over there, that cute little advent calendar, I also said if you shared that video, I would draw for the Spirited Snowman and you guys shared the heck out of that video, so thank you. Um, and I picked one random winner, Marion McGinnis. Marion, I don't think I have your mailing address, so if you will please message me or email me so I can send you the Spirited Snowman. I'll get it right out to you, okay? Okay, so looks like you guys are here. You can hear me. Um, I am in the right place. I'm not on some random place. I think it's time to get started stamping. Um, just to remind you, any orders placed with the host code that is right here on the PDF, it's on my blog, you'll see it when I flip the camera, any order that's $30, um, or more will get these make and takes for free in the mail next week. Um, this is what they look like. Here's last week's. I send all the pieces and I make you a cute little tag as a thank you. So you have to use that host code unless your order is over $100. I mean, over $150, don't use the host code because then you get the stamping rewards and I will still send you the uh, make and takes. Okay, I think we're ready. All right, yes, I see, let's see, who just told me it's backwards? Judy, I know it's backwards, but I'm gonna flip it here in a second, and then it won't be backwards, and I'd rather it not be backwards down here. I know, it's very confusing. Okay, so hold on just a second, you guys. I'm gonna flip you around. Now I have this new microphone attached. I hope it's not making crazy noise. Let's see, let me turn you down here. So this week's focus has been, woo, sorry about that. This week's focus has been the Takeout Treats box. I've been using both the framelit and the stamp set. I'm gonna get that wire out of the way just a second. Um, this is a fun, let me get that out of the way. Just close your eyes so you're not on a roller coaster. It'll stop. Okay. <laughs> Um, this is a great little framelit if you um, like to do 3D items. Uh, I love to do 3D items, as you guys know. So this one is right up my alley, and I have had so much fun playing with it. I have found a way to make a small one, a extra wide one, and a fatter one, I guess we could say. And that's what I have done. So we're gonna make this guy, he's extra wide, okay? And we're gonna do the itty bitty baby. Let me, sh well, I'll show you in a second. And we're gonna do, where's the s'mores? I didn't bring it over here, it's over here. We're gonna do the s'mores box with, of course, well I can't go one week without my buffalo check. All right, so those are the three. Here are just a couple. I showed you these on Tuesday. Um, just a couple variations. These are all over Pinterest. If you type in uh, Stampin' Up! Takeout Treats uh, box, you will find lots and lots and lots of ideas. And you know what? I'm just seeing, Shelby just said she shared the video. And Shelby, you reminded me to tell you what the prize is this week. I have prizes for sharing. You can win this prize by sharing the video or by going over to my blog, pinkbuckaroo.com and entering over there. There's a little thing at the end of the post. I have a whole holiday catalog paper share that I am going to give away to one person from the blog entry and one person who shares. All right, so thank you Shelby for reminding me. I'm so focused on trying to get everything done today that I forgot the most important part. All right, so we got that done, share share the video, don't forget. Go over to my blog, pinkbuckaroo.com and enter at the bottom of my blog post. All right, so here are just a few, but we're not making these today. We're making, we're gonna start with this guy. And I wanna show you him compared to the normal one. Can you see how he's, 
he's smaller, he's itty bitty. And I cannot take credit for this box. My friend Melody Hyde, who is a concept artist um, with Stampin' Up, she had a little video over on her Instagram account, Ham and Pip. Penny and Ham design, Ham and Penny, I can't remember. I'll have to look it up for you, but she's on Instagram and you can find her, her stuff's amazing. Um, and so she had a little video over there and um, I I copied her video and I made it and I loved it. So I had to share it with you guys. Okay, so let's get to it. Now, where are my framelits? Hello. They're on the wrong tray over here. I had them on the last tray. Here's what we're using today. And this is the framelit that you need to, to cut out um, a takeout box. And you actually need to cut two of them. This is what it looks like when you have cut it out. And you can get two complete boxes out of a full sheet of paper. So if you have half a sheet, you can actually fit the framelit like that and cut two. All right, so what we're gonna do to these is we're gonna cut them down and score them so that they're a little bit smaller. Man, I have just random stuff sticking to my stamp set. Okay, I'm very distracted by the concrete, man. I can't, I'm not gonna lie, you guys. They're, the concrete tr truck is arriving and it's very distracting out there. We're expanding our driveway. Our driveway is super skinny and my husband and I both have big vehicles and my daughter is getting a car in the next few weeks. So we're trying to make more room in our driveway. So that's why I'm distracted, just so you guys know. Okay, I'm focusing, focusing. So you've cut two of these out, right? What we're gonna do is we're gonna take this score line. See how this one, there's a natural score line right here. This is the smaller side. And we're gonna move that score line up. I've put a solid line here showing that that's where you're gonna cut. Then over here, we're going to make a score line half an inch above that score line and then we're gonna cut that. I know that sounds weird, but just watch how I do it and it'll make more sense. So here you have one of your sides, one of your pieces, and I call this the lobster claw. This is the side that has the little hook. We're gonna cut off the smaller side. We're gonna leave the bottom tab connected to the side that has the lobster claw. And I'm gonna just cut it across there on that score line. Now I'm gonna use my stamp and trimmer, and you guys know that I, um, prefer the Simply Scored scoring tool. However, with this, I think that the Stampin' Trimper, Trimmer is better because right here, these are all curved lines. So on the, tr on the um, Simply Scored, I wouldn't be able to make it straight up here at the top. But these have these great, this Stampin' Trimmer has these great grid lines that I can line everything up to. Now here's our score line that was made by the Framelit. We're not gonna fold it because we don't wanna use that line, but we're gonna use it as a marker. I am putting it right here on the, um, the, the, the track for my scoring tool. And then I'm gonna move it down half an inch. Over here, we still have these grid marks. We're moving it down half an inch. And I'm gonna make sure that it's lined up with that line right here and right here so that I know when I score it, it's gonna be straight. All right, so we've just scored a line half an inch above the original score line. Now take that line that you just scored and move it up to the one inch right here, line it up on both sides, and then take your blade and cut the tab off like that. So now that's what it looks like, okay? So we've just taken that score line and moved it up. Now over here, we don't have anything on the bottom hanging off, so all we need to do is make a score line half an inch up from the bottom. So again, move the bottom to the half inch score mark on the right side of the track and score. Notice I have these labeled score and cut <laughs> because did you see what I almost did? I almost tried to score with my cutting blade and it doesn't work. It ruins the whole project. So I had, to, I had to label those a few years ago. All right, so now here we go. We've got to do some trimming. Um, here's our new score line. We're gonna cut this tab, the side tab, off down here below the score line. And I'm gonna cut the side tab at an angle. Now I'm gonna do the same thing over here. Snip and snip, and then make that at an angle. Okay, now, 
We've got those two and look, ahead of time, I went ahead and did these two. You're going to do small, big, small, big. You're gonna alternate, okay? Now you want to use tear and tape on this because tear and tape is the perfect width for our little tabs. So it's perfect. All right, so let's see. I've got all my lines. I wanna make sure that I've got them all burnished. Use your bone folder. It'll give you a nice crisp fold. And I have mine, yay. Let's fold it, burnish. Same with those side tabs. How many of you have played with a takeout box? Do you like it? It is one of the easier um, 3D framelits that we have had. Nothing was will ever replace the Kirby Keepsake box in my heart. It was my favorite um, and it was so easy to put together. But this one isn't too bad either. Okay, let's get them back in order and let's start adhering. I'm gonna take that off and I'm gonna line these up so that the bottom score line and the top score lines match. Okay, and I'm just gonna keep going down, small, big, and now a small again. And then this one. Now, I did record some videos this morning of these, so there will be clean recordings of these over on YouTube. They were, I'm gonna, I'm not gonna lie, you guys, they were not my best effort. It has been a, it has been crazy town around here with this concrete, these um, workers out here doing the concrete and my dog going crazy. It's just been crazy. But anyway, they'll be there for you. <laughs> um, so I've peeled that off of that last tab and I'm gonna fold it over and line it up. Can you guys hear it? Can you guys hear the, the drill or the, it's not a drill, I guess it's a concrete saw. They had to move the sprinkler system. Okay, so there we have it, like that. We're gonna fold in these little bitty guys, fold one of these in and put tear and tape on this last one. Okay, good, Lisa, you can't hear them? I mean, they have not been loud at all. They've had to dig out all the dirt today and so they decided to turn on their tools at 159, right before I hit record. And then how it always is. All right, so there we go. And it is all put together and it's so cute. It's a little baby, isn't it cute? All right, now we're gonna put a handle on this guy. We're gonna take the 1 8 inch circle punch and punch a hole on the two end sides, the two shorter sides. And then I'm gonna take my braided linen trim and I'm going to feed it through the hole from the outside. And I'm gonna tie a knot. Oh, Shannon, you can hear it. Joanne, the hamburger box was the worst. It was so cute, but my goodness, it was hard to put together. I totally agree with you. Yeah, it was so cute and I wanted it to be easy and it just wasn't easy. All right, so now I'm feeding it through the outside again. I'm tying a knot on the inside. Well, come on. Poor little, little Charlie is locked in our room. He doesn't understand why he's locked up. He's barking. All right, so now let's close it up. And these just kind of slide together like that. You know, this is um, such a great little size. Just all you would need was maybe three Hershey Kisses in there. How cute, isn't it adorable? Okay, let's do our little tag. I'm gonna stamp some of the things from the stamp set. Let's get all of these over here. Sorry for all the reaching. I have already cut out the galvanized metal paper using the banner framelit. And you can see it has these score lines on it so that you can fold it backwards like that. Isn't that neat? Okay, now we're gonna do, you know what I, last time, when I made this, I wasted my paper. You guys, what do you call this shape right here? What do you call that? I kind of was flustered today. I couldn't think of what I would call that. A tag, a dog tag, a label. I don't know. It's cute though, it's striped. I like stripes. Adds a little pattern without having to use designer series paper. I'm stamping the holly and memento because I'm gonna take my blends and color it in 
When you are stamping with blends, you've got to use your water-based ink. And Memento is our water-based black ink. We're going to use stays on in the next project. And I will tell you why when we get there. But Memento is water-based and you want to use it with your blends. Dog, I guess, Kirstine, that's funny. Hi, Kathy, welcome. A ticket, yeah, kind of like a ticket. I don't know, maybe it just doesn't have a name, a label. All right, I have got to get my magnetic platform here. Let's put this in like that, and we're gonna lay, we're gonna line up the framelits. There's the whatever it is called, the whatchamacallit. And then the holly, and let's see, the holly is little, so sometimes the little framelits like to jump around. Oh, yeah, there we go. When your framelits jump around like that, move your paper. Let the framelit be the boss, let the magnet be the boss, and you just move your paper wherever it wants to go instead of trying to fight it. All right, so now let's move those down there. And where is my circle punch? One and a fourth inch circle. Thanks. I'm glad you guys like it. I tried to come up with something kind of, and you know, a little bit unique. There's so many ideas that have, so many good ideas already done out there. It's hard to sometimes come up with something that hasn't already been done. All right, so I'm taking my little circle and I'm popping it up with a dimensional. And I'm gonna put my galvanized banner with a dimensional as well. And hmm, I'm a little off center. Well, we're just gonna go with it. And then we'll put two dimensionals here on the back. And last but not least, some Christmas cheer for you. Three Hershey Kisses, the Peppermint Hershey Kisses. Are they called Peppermint or Candy Cane? Those are so good. And I think they would be really good in here since we've got the red and white stripe. I know, it's not even Halloween, I know. Elongated Octagon, ooh, that's a mouthful. Yes, maybe. That's a good one, Judy. All right, there it is. Put that on with a glue dot. And there you have project number one. I hope you guys like it and I hope you understood my directions. It's not complicated. You just gotta move each score line up half an inch. That's it. Not too complicated. All right, good. Thank you for the hearts. You guys are so sweet, I love it. All right, so let me clean up my mess and I will move to my next project. The next one is probably my favorite and it's the one that I posted a picture of just a minute ago, the s'mores treat. And you know this buffalo background stamp with black on red. I did it and I didn't know which direction I was going in, but then I, I had an idea. It looks very camping, right? It looks kind of like we're going on a camping trip. Oh, wait, where did my marshmallows go? Oh, I need to, this is not the finished. Here's the finished one right there. All right, so I'm gonna tell you all about it, but first, let's make the box. And I want you to notice that the box is bigger. What did I do with that other one? Here's the normal size box. Can you see how it's fatter? I made it fatter, all right? So it's a fatter box. And what we're gonna do, the way we're gonna do that is we're going to use the claw side right here on all four sides, okay? So if you cut a strip of paper that is three by five and a half, you'll have plenty of paper and you won't waste too much by cutting out both sides. All right, so run it through four times. And then we're gonna trim it down. You know, when I get prepared for Fridays, I have all this space, I'm very organized. <laughs> and then something happens. I don't know. All right, so we're gonna cut this off. We don't need this right here, okay? So cut that off, just like that. And there you have it, that's all you need. Now we're gonna use the Buffalo Check background stamp. Now remember, I've done, we're gonna do four of these. I've actually pre-done two of them. Um, here's the second one. And then here are these, but pretend like you don't see these yet, okay? All right, so Buffalo background check, you wanna use your Stamparatus. 
Um, put that buffalo background check there, that stamp there. Put your case underneath here that'll keep it nice and flush so it'll ease, it's easy to ink. Grab your Stamparatus um, grid paper. Have you guys seen this? It's so cute. I don't know why I think it's cute, but it's just cute. It fits perfectly in there. Um, I guess the rounded side goes on the rounded side. I had it wrong, but that's okay. And you can see where I stamped last time. Let's put it back here. Because if we stamped without the grid paper, then our base would get all yucky. So we're gonna just put that there to protect our base. Now when you stamp these, notice that the buffalo is on the inside, okay? So that means we're gonna stamp on the back of these. Um, I thought that because we're leaving it open, we should do the, the check on the, on the inside. So here's the front. The front, you can tell it's the front because you see all the score lines. So put it down so that it's the back. I found that when stamping the score lines, it did not take very well to those score lines. So don't fold it or anything yet. We'll do that after we stamp it, okay? You don't really need to worry about this part because that's down in the bottom. It's up here at the top that we really want to um, stamp it on. All right, so take your magnet to hold that in place just like that. Okay, now here's where we're gonna use stays on. And I have to tell you guys a funny story. When I was doing this a little while ago for the video, I dropped the stamp pad like this on my nails. And I painted my nails last night. I never paint my nails. That stays on, got on my nail, and would not come off. <laughs> That's what I get for painting my nails. Okay, so stays on, very um, permanent. It's a very solid, very black ink. It's just really, really good. Um, just a dark black. Um, when you're stamping on a colored cardstock, especially, it's really good because you're gonna get a really dark image. Memento um, isn't quite as substantial as a black ink. It works great for everything else, but when you are stamping on cardstock, stays on is a great choice. However, you don't wanna use your stays on with your photopolymer stamps. Those are the ones that are super clear. You know, you can see all the way through because they do something to them. They, they um, don't react well. You can use them, just clean them real quickly. Um, I try not to use my stays on on my photopolymer ever, but this is red rubber, so no problem. So we're gonna ink, 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 and I've told you guys before, um, I hear lots of people saying they cannot get a solid image with their Buffalo background stamp. My tips are use your Stamparatus first of all. Second of all, use a very juicy pad. All right, so I have inked up my pad. And then my third tip is to stand up. Don't just do, 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 oh, I'm just pushing. No, no, you gotta like get on it and push. Push with your palm all the way around. Really, really, really push. Now when you're stamping on colored cardstock, it's gonna be harder to get a more solid image. Um, that's why you gotta do it two, sometimes three times, okay? So just know that you're not gonna get a good impression if you just go boop, boop. No, you gotta really put some elbow grease into it, really use a lot of ink. I love my Buffalo background stamp. All right, now the magnet held it in place, and there, that looks good, right there. Well, that's the tab, so it doesn't matter. All right, so I'm gonna take them off, and yes, I already did the other two. Otherwise, you would put your next two in and stamp, stamp, stamp. All right, let's move this out of the way and bring over these guys. Ah, I can't get it. All right, so they're all the same. We're gonna fold the, let me look at where my score line is. You're gonna fold the tab to the outside, the top to the outside, the tab to the end, <laughs> the tab to the inside, and then the bottom to the inside, okay? So the top goes out, the tab goes in, and the bottom goes in. Look at your score lines, make sure you're getting it in the right place. Use your bone folder. I'm just gonna do this like this because I'm in a hurry. I don't want you guys to have to sit and watch me score things for half an hour. All right, so now we need to put our uh, tear and tape on the tabs on the front, okay? So flip them all over, get your tear and tape. Uh, yes, Mary, I recommend using stays on. Um, Memento is a great ink, but I just find for something like this, 
stays on is so much darker and richer, um, but it is very, very <laughs> permanent. Um, I, you know, I couldn't even get off my nail within like three seconds of it touching it. And it, um, it is not good for your photopolymer stamps. So if you use your photopolymer stamps, like if you're gonna watercolor, you wanna use stays on. And if you need to use it on your photopolymer, just wash it really, really quickly. All right, so we're gonna do this. We're gonna go through here and do just like we did a minute ago. Put all of these together. Did you guys catch Tuesday's advent calendar? I've seen several of you posting about your boards that you found at Michael's to go and uh, get your board to put your advent calendar on. Yeah, I linked the, on my blog, I linked it up to the Michaels website where you can actually see the board. All right, so now just fold these in and let's do a little bit of adhesive. And fold them in. <laughs> Christine, you're funny. All right, push these in and there's our bottom. All right, there we have it. There's your box. And I'm just gonna leave it open like that. Um, you know, if you wanted to close it, you could, but those two pieces are probably not gonna meet in the middle. You know, they're not gonna meet because we made it wider. I wanted to leave it open. Now what I put inside were two little Hershey milk chocolate bars. Then I got some graham crackers and these are our two by eight cello bags. Four little quarters of a graham cracker fit in here perfectly. And then I folded it over and taped it. So hopefully they'll stay crunchy. Then I did the same thing with the same bag, two by eight, filled it with marshmallows. And I actually cut off about three inches at the top and I tied it really good with our um, braided linen trim, okay? So I'm gonna put that in there, but we need to add one more thing. I have this little tag right here. And I'm gonna stamp it with yum. This is from the, the Takeout Treats um, stamp set. All right, there's that. Then I cut a galvanized star. Danny, this is s'mores. Have you not heard of s'mores before? All right, I'm gonna put a little dimensional there. S'mores are something that you cook over a campfire. You put the chocolate and the marshmallows, marshmallows in between the graham crackers and they melt and it's yummy and squishy and kids love it. All right, the last thing is a faceted gem or faceted dot, I can't remember what we call them and I'm using the black ones. And last but not least, we're gonna take one more dimensional and put that right there. All right, and there you go, how fun. You know, um, a camping themed birthday party, these would be great little favors, or a camping trip with your friends, or maybe like a, a masculine teacher gift, I think that's kind of fun. I don't know, I think it's cute. What do you guys think? I think it's fun. All right, one more project. Oh, let me show you this. This is how I did it originally. I was gonna do it in green, but then I decided to do it in red. See how I folded them over and tied that around? Just another option. Just another option. All right, one more. Let me get my tray. Now this one took me forever to figure out and I don't think it should have taken me forever. <laughs> this is an extra wide takeout treat box. So let's see, where are my treat boxes? Here is a normal size one. So you can see how I've made it extra long and it looks, it's wider too. All right, now this one takes a little bit of focus. No, not really focus, you just have to to make sure that when you cut the first few, the first ones that you do them exactly, you know, that you line them up. But I'm gonna show you, it's not gonna be too hard. All right, so let's get started. Um, I did this with Thanksgiving in mind. This is um, a pumpkin, a copper pumpkin, punch art pumpkin, we'll make that last. Um, but I thought that would be cute sitting at um, 
your Thanksgiving table. Love you lots. I don't know. I just thought that was sweet to tell the people who are at your Thanksgiving dinner. There's also a sentiment that says thank you. So you could do that one too. Okay. So where is my framelit? Here we go. You're going to need two pieces of crumb cake that measure four and a fourth by four and three fourths. Now remember, this is over there on my blog on that PDF. So don't feel like you have to write it down. You just go over there and print it. All right, so here is, it's four and a fourth, four and a fourth by four and three fourths. And we want the four and three fourths side to be tall, okay? Now I have to always remind myself how to do this. Okay, I'm gonna put this over here on the left side of the plate and I'm gonna use, wait a minute, I'm thinking, yes, I'm gonna use the skinny side right here. Can you see where I dropped my stays on this morning on it? <laughs> stays on was everywhere. Okay, so, between the top and the bottom is four and three fourths. So that's why we made our paper that tall. So I'm gonna take it and I'm gonna line it up so that we are on the left side of the paper. Let me think, am I doing this right? Nope. We're gonna be on the left side. We wanna be on the left side of the, of the base. I'll show you why. All right, so line it up at the very edge. This is at the edge, this is down here at the edge, and this is at the top. We're going to just cut, pretend I can cut that in half, we're just going to cut from here over. We just want to cut the left side, okay? So the way you do that is you take your clear plate and you put it over just half of it right here. That way none of this is going to cut. And the reason why I wanted this on this side of my plate is because if I put it over here, then it would be hard to push it through my big shot with just a, the the plate, it would be weird and it wouldn't go through very easily. So you wanna put it on the far end so that you have as much of your platform covered by two plates. All right, so we're just gonna cover this, or we're just gonna cut this half. Now be careful when you run it through because it shoots out the other side like this. And you gotta hold it so it doesn't shoot. All right, so let's look and see what we did. Aha, see there? We just did that half. Now we're gonna take it and we're gonna do the other half on this side. Okay, so this time we're gonna be on the left side of the plate and we're gonna line it up just like we did on the edge, on the edge of the top and the edge of the bottom. And then we're gonna cover it over here because we want it to just cut that half. Okay, let's see. Well, if I can feed it through, this is when Come on, there we go. This is when I get nervous. Doing tricky things on Facebook Live is scary, you guys. All right, let's look at it. Take it off and there we have it. Okay, so what we've done basically is taken this side right here and we've stretched it out long. All right, pretty cool, right? And not hard. So now you just wanna cut off that extra bit right there and that's what it should look like, these two. Now, let me bring that back over. We need to cut that's the front and the back, but we also need the sides. And we're gonna do the same thing we did last time, the last project with this lobster claw side. We're gonna cut two of those. All right, clear plate. How am I doing on time? Oh, good, I'm doing good. All right, now let's see, there we go, we've got that. I think we can move this out of the way for just a little bit. We're gonna need it again here in a second. All right, so cut this piece off because we don't need it. All right, now let's come back over here to these and we need to add in this score line. Um, the framelit will score it right here all the way across and right here all the way across, but because we because of what we did, we don't have any score lines in the middle. So I'm just gonna line up that score line and that score line in the, why can't I remember that, that word, the track? Oh, no cutting. Take your score line and do that there so you have your score line there all the way across and then do the one on the bottom. I always wanna call it the ditch because it is kind of a ditch, right? The ditch, but that sounds kind of like a bad word. It is the track. But for some reason my brain can't remember that word. Okay. Now we are ready to assemble. So we're gonna put tear and tape again and we're gonna do the same thing we did last time. If I can find my tear and tape right here. 
big and small and big and small. Thanks, Kathy. I'm not I'm not kidding when I say this took this required quite a bit of brain work. <laughs> and I won't tell you how many times I tried it before I actually figured it out. I mean, it should make sense, but I don't know. It just took me a while, but I'm glad you like it. All right, so let's take all these off. Oh, no, you know what? Okay, I'm gonna stop right here because I forgot to do this in the video. It was kind of an afterthought. Did you guys notice this right here? These little cute little bannery things. Um, what I did, oh, I hear a honking. Oh, the big cement truck is here. Get ready, it's gonna get crazy. It's gonna get crazy. Where did my dauber go? You guys, I need an assistant. I really do. I've lost the dauber. Well, good thing that they come in packs of five, huh? Let's just grab another one. Oh my goodness, it is crazy out there. Okay, here's my silicone sheet, and I'm gonna take just one little drop. Well, okay, maybe two. Oh, that was kind of big. Two little drops, and this is copper, bright copper, glimmer paint. And I'm gonna dab, 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 and then I'm just gonna dab it on my stamp. All right, and then, and you know what? Because of time, I think I'm just gonna do one side um, because it really does need to dry. So dab, 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 dab. But originally, I did it on all four sides. I just wanted to add a little more sparkle. No, not really sparkle, but something, something. Can you guys see that? So it's a fun way to use your, oh, I better not. I'm gonna make a mess if I do more because we don't have time for them to dry. All right, so pretend I did on all four, okay? That's what we're gonna do. My husband told me last night, the concrete guys are coming tomorrow. And I thought, oh, okay, in the morning, it'll be perfect. And he said, around two o'clock. And I was like, come on, you know that's the time I do Facebook Live. And he was like, he doesn't understand. Oh my goodness. Good thing we're on our last project. Because it was crazy. Can you guys hear him? You want this my assistant job, Sandy? Come on, I'll take it. I actually have somebody here who's been helping me quite a bit lately, my downline Denise. She has been a lifesaver lately. She lives very close to me, so that makes it really easy. All right, so big, small, big, small, all the way across. Burnish those lines. Fold in your tops and your bottoms. And if you're not on camera with concrete being poured right outside the window, you can take your bone folder at your own leisurely pace and just fold them all. But <laughs> we're just gonna do it like this. All right, fold that one in and adhere like that. It kind of looks like um, a loaf, like a like you could put like a little banana nut bread in here. Um, you know, the little loaf pans, the mini loaf pans, that's what it reminds me of. All right, so fold in that bottom the same way we did. Oh, good, Christine, I'm glad. <sighs> I'm like sweaty. I'm like, oh, this is this is crazy. Okay, so here we go. This is what it looks like. Obviously, your lobster claws are not gonna touch. They are not gonna reach each other. Um, so they're gonna be folded in first, okay? We're not even worrying about that. Then these guys fold like that. And to keep them together, you're gonna need some ribbon. Oh, and you, the UPS man is here. My goodness, it is crazy. Hello, UPS man, he's bringing me a Stampin' Up box. All right, now I used crumb cake woven ribbon um, on the original box. However, I ran out, so we're using Whisper White Classic, is that what it's called? Classic Weave Ribbon. There we go, that's how I'm holding it close. So it's not gonna keep it airtight, guys. So you might wanna just do candy or wrap, if you have a little, like a little chocolate mini loaf or something, wrap it in good in some, some saran wrap, and then you can put it in your box. Okay, very good. Now, let's make, let's make our punch art pumpkins. I'm gonna take my two inch circle punch, and I'm gonna punch three copper foil 
circles. I keep wanting to call it bronze. Bronze. I keep wanting to say the, your bronze pumpkin, your bronze um, paper. And since we're getting the big shot out, let's go ahead and do these other things that we need to do. We're going to do the heart in rich razzleberry. I wanted to pick um, a rich color that was fallish, but not in the browns family, since we already have brown. And I, oh, you know what? I'm going to do it this way because last time I was too short on my paper. All right, so there we've got that. And actually, I think I stamped in early espresso. Let's cut these out. And we're going to use the banner and the heart. Have you guys seen there's other shapes in here? I don't know if I pointed that out to you. We've used several of them. The star, the banner, the whatchamacallit, because we don't know the tag, the label. Eh, they're a little bit too close. Your magnetic platform will hold those in place as you go across. I know, Catherine, you're right. Feast or famine. Feast or famine. Isn't that the truth? All right, move these over here. Now let's emboss our copper foil circles with the swirls and curls embossing folder. When you have a one-sided paper, you want to make sure that the the part that pops out is coming out the front. Um, you don't. You could have it debossed, which means everything pops in and goes out the back. But I want them all popping out. So to do that, make sure you put it face down on the side that has the Stampin' Up logo. See that? So just put them in here like this. There we go. And this is not one of our thick embossing folders. It's one of the regular ones. So you're going to use both of your your plates. The swirls and curls is super cute. And I love the way it looks with the copper. Aren't those pretty? Very pretty. Okay, big, Mr. Big Shot, we are done with you today. All right, so now let's get some dimensionals. And we're going to put four dimensionals on the back of one of these circles because it's going to overlap these other two. Like that. All right. I hope you guys join me next week. My projects, I'm a little obsessed with them. Um, I don't know if Sarah is still on here, but she talked about, this is an early espresso scrap, by the way, and I'm just going to cut it at an angle to make the stem. She has played with the new Snowflake framelits, and she's she said she was, loved them. They were her favorite framelits ever. And I have to say, Miss Sarah, I agree. They are really beautiful. And we're going to get messy next week. We're going to do some watercoloring. And we're going to do some just some crazy stuff to go with those snowflakes to make them really pop. They're beautiful. All right, now here's our heart. And remember, our banner has those fold lines. And you need to give your ink quite a, a bit of time to dry on this Whisper White paper. Oh, good. Mine did not smear. There's Sarah. She says, yep, they are the best. And I thought, oh, you know, snowflakes. No, they are really good. They are, and the fact that there's a second stamp set that goes with them that are not snowflakes that you can use up in, you know, in the spring and summer, it's flowers and stuff. Um, so just make sure you join me next week. I'm going to spend a lot of time on those um, those beautiful, beautiful snow, snowflake framelits. All right, we're ready to put our punch art copper foil pumpkin on the front of our box with a couple of dimensionals. It's going to kind of straddle that ribbon just like, wait a minute. Yeah, okay. I thought maybe I was using the other one. There we go. And there you go. You have beautiful little table settings or little treats for people at Thanksgiving. Isn't that beautiful? And it holds quite a bit of um, maybe fudge or a little, you know, like I said, a little banana nut bread loaf. Very, very cool. And not too difficult to extend that. Just think about that paper. All it has to be is four and three fourths tall. Then it could be as long as you want it. I mean, you could make your box this long. You just have to move, make sure that on one end you cut 
the left side of the framelit and on the right end you cut the right side of the framelit and so it could be as long as you want um, as long as it's four and three-fourths tall it can go all the way up to 12 inches if you wanted and you can have a super long box all right you guys i hope you liked these projects today let's take a look we did the s'mores box we did the itty bitty and we did the advent calendar earlier this week that was so cute now remember if you want these free in the mail as projects to make with your takeout treat box framelit or and stamp set use this hostess code by monday night um, monday at midnight you have to use the hostess code that's how i know you want the make and takes if you don't use the hostess code i will think you didn't want the make and takes unless your order is 150 dollars, then you, uh, don't use the hostess code because you're going to get free rewards you guys know that if your order is at 150 dollars, you start earning rewards and it's 15 dollars in free product at 150 and it only goes up from there so just keep that in mind um i'm distracted because somebody's walking to the door <laughs> okay it's good that i'm ending a little bit early today um, you guys, let me know if you have questions. Next week, I really hope you join me for a really fun snowflake. I know it's Halloween on Wednesday, but it's going to be Christmas and snowing in my office. <laughs> All right, you guys, have a wonderful weekend. And let me know if you have questions. Make sure you hop over to my blog to enter for the prize and share the video for the to be entered for the prize and get that PDF sheet. All right, guys, thanks so much. Bye-bye.